back, everybody, to Waterbox Live here Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you destroy that like button. I like that today. one. Okay, I'll take that one. But I you like can it. you can gently graze it as well. <laughs> Gently. <laughs> or you can smash it. There's a lot yes. of options here, yes. but it is mandatory. Whichever way you do it, you have to just yes. follow, subscribe, hit the like button, all that good stuff. Hit the stuff. notifications, yep. too, because we're here every week. Right now, we're here twice a week. Yes. So make sure to take advantage of that. We have a really exciting show. We're doing some live fragging on corals that came from the 220. Let's get it started. Tim Perry's smooshing the like button. Smooshing? So, yeah. Okay, you can do that. Smoosh thing. instead of smash. <laughs> uh, you can see our Instagram names up there. Definitely follow us for some behind the scenes content. And um, definitely make sure you're commenting and engaging in here. Ask yes. questions because we are giving away two shirts here at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. Some dropping knowledges and get your knowledges shirts. Um, you can also find them on our website under apparel, swag, something. We do have something else really oh, neat. Oh, yes. That, we should probably uh, talk about that. I yeah. really forgot. So you guys have been asking for this for a while. You always see the... Which, which direction is it? You always see these mugs that we're drinking out of here. So these are actually... We, have, we did a limited run. Yes. Of the water box mugs in blue. Oh, there you go. Look at that. They even have a graphic for it. Oh, la, la. Yeah. So there you go. Oh, that went way fast. Yeah, can you pull that up um, one more time? Yeah. <laughs> so we got the, the mugs available. Definitely take advantage of that. There's, again, a limited edition. So if you want to get one How of those many? blue mugs that people have been asking for, I think there's like 24. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we've had a lot of people ask about these um, for a pretty long period of time. So we finally got these available um, and ready to start shipping. These right. are typically employee-only vessels. They are. I actually need a new one. Do I have to pay full price? <laughs> yes. No. Yes. <laughs> I'm just Darn kidding. it. No. Um, yeah, no, these are awesome mugs of what we use every day on the show and all around the office and stuff. So definitely check those out on the website for a limited run of those. Yep. And then, um, like I said, we'll get in away two shirts. So definitely be active in the comments. And we're talking about fragging today. We're not talking about it, we're doing it. Yeah, live demonstration, you guys. So put the questions below if you have them. Yeah, so last week we showed. <laughs> Basically, the Dream Build 220.6, which was at our main office that's been up and running for close to three years, got torn down, got converted into a fish only. All that coral made its way over here into our six foot frag. And it, a lot of it is on big chunks of rock where it needs to be cut down, make some frags. Um, all this coral is eventually either going into the LX or future builds. You know, we've got a whole frag tank just yeah. to kind of have revolving corals. So, we're going to show you some fragging, how to color colonies, how to make frags. Uh, different types of coral, all of that good stuff. So cool. Yes, it's always Again, fun and exciting. If you guys have questions, put them below. I'd like to see you guys' guess, though. Do you think that Jess is going to wear gloves <laughs> or goggles? <laughs> 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 I'm going to get yelled at. Um, Jess should is you give the Should you give the disclaimer now? Yeah, Jess is a professional. I suggest you wear gloves and maybe even some eyewear when you do this, because there is. You know, there's risk, involved. risk with uh, bacterial infections, right? Or something along those lines? Yes. So, I mean, definitely always recommend wearing gloves and eye things. You can cut yourself, you can get poisons, you can get blood poisoning. I've had that. It's not fun. Um, more stuff than in once. your eye. Yes, more than once. <laughs> but I feel that I am bionic now and I don't have any susceptibility Part to getting it. <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely still suggest it. I just do not use it. Yeah. Yeah. So, there you go. Sorry. But, yeah. All right, let's go frag. Cool. All right. <laughs> Let's do it. If you guys have questions, post them below. I got um, these guys. We're going to go over to the bandsaw here in the back of the studio. Again, we broke down the 220.6, so all these corals came over from that system. Our plan for this tank is just like a coral holding tank, right? Coral holding tank, yeah. So basically, we're going to have corals available for the LX as it matures. Um, we also, just for different builds we're doing, we'll always have a kind of a good variety of corals, um, along with working with other, like, stores and stuff like we do now, like Living Reef is sponsoring the LX for a lot of the coral and livestock. Um, but it all got moved into here, everyone is settled and really happy, and it's time just to cut a few of them down. As you saw last week's video, is a lot of them were on massive huge rocks from the 220, 
and end up just kind of busting them up to get them to fit in here. I didn't want to bring a lot of the actual rock over. So a lot of it got busted up, so it's not exactly in the prettiest form. Some stuff is still attached to the multiple coral colonies on one, and it's just time to get them into nice looking pieces. So when they go into a tank, it's not just this big chunk or it's larger than all the other corals that go in. So we have a uh, griffin bandsaw, which is my favorite for using for this. You actually have like a salt water in the reservoir, which keeps the blade cool and makes sure that the corals don't dry out, keeps them wet while you're cutting them. And then something really simple is I don't have a frag rack holder. So like if I'm going to be using these little pegs to put some of the corals on, if you set them down, they fall over while they need to glue. I took a sponge and I just cut it. And you can see they just sit right in there. A cheap makeshift frag rack there you while go. you're doing fragging. So I can just put them in here and they're ready to glue because you do want to let the coral sit on the plug for a little bit once you glue them. So this is going to give these a place to stay upright and not fall over. We'll just get those set up. And we are using Ecotic Coral Glue. It's my favorite one. It's a really nice thick glue. Works great. A big bottle like this, easy squeeze. You don't lose a lot of it by not being able to like squeeze a bottle anymore. So this is what we use for this. That's good stuff. It's super thick. It is. It's perfect. And you can even use it underwater. Um, but it's really thick so it holds the coral in place. And then you can be a bite in bulk, which is great because if you're doing a lot of fragging, um, it's going to last you quite a long time. So we have a couple different like handful types of corals in here that we need to cut. General rule, if you're cutting a lot of corals at one time, don't start with your soft corals because like zoos and mushrooms and stuff have a lot more slime and toxins. It's going to get into the saw and on the blade, can be more irritating to other corals. So we're going to start with your harder type corals. Mostly LPS and chalices is what we have for that. We don't have any SPS in here because we didn't really do, well, I guess Montes, um, any of those in the 220. So we're actually, we'll start with our Monteopora. This is our grafted Monte. So what my goal is, is because we had it grow out, you can see these big pieces, is only as some parts of it actually had the grafted color to it, whereas a lot of it was just plain orange. I'm gonna mm. get rid of the orange so that when we transfer pieces, we have a really nice grafted part to start with, and it kind of continues that really nice colorful look to it. So I'm gonna take the big piece we have. As you see, there's only a couple sections that have much green. We're gonna kind of isolate those so we have full grafted pieces as it grows out. So I think you can hear me when I turn this on, right? Steven yeah. says, dude, I, I had... <clears throat> Hopefully you can hear me as I talk, yeah. Steven says, uh, do you iodine dip after fragging? Um, generally, a lot of times you should if it's a more sensitive fleshy coral. We're not at this point just because we're just gonna show a lot of different yeah. corals at once and get them back in. You can always take them out iodine and dip them after. Um, if you're cutting through a lot of flesh, then I would suggest probably iodine dipping because there's more chance of infection for that. So, cut the saw on. The blade stays wet with the salt water down below. Here's our green section. This is a really easy coral to cut because it's very thin. Not a lot of skeleton. So what I did is I took, this has green and green, and when I glue that down or place that somewhere, it's gonna have a really nice grafted part to it. And then we have one other section in this one that has a lot of green. Again, if you guys have questions, <clears throat> put them below. I'll try to throw them in as we can. And then this will also be a nice grafted piece. You can actually see that's where the original plug was on the very beginning piece of the grafted Monty that we have. So this one doesn't have to be re-put on a plug. Just gonna go ahead and put them into our frag rack here. And then this one, run carbon after you do this, if you are, and you're doing it in your aquarium. This one's gonna go on a larger frag plug. Just a little bit of coral glue. I'm going to put it on the surface here. You're saying, hey, to Waterbox Reef joining us here. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to let that for, sit for a second and put that in. These other pieces will go back in. <clears throat> but those are going to be pretty much all orange. And they're not going to have much of that grafting to them. They're still a pretty orange cap, but we're trying to kind of isolate the grafting part of it. 
Jess, how long can these corals stay out of the water is one of the questions. Um, corals can spend a surprisingly large amount of time outside of water. You, um, <clears throat> I mean, some corals a couple hours, but just try to keep it as short as possible. Yeah, a lot of, a lot I of mean, corals. 10, 15 minutes, usually not a big deal. If you're going to yeah. keep them out for a while, do so you see this piece here now that I cut it? Green, green, grafting with the orange. It's going to grow out to be a really nice grafting piece on that one. So another one we want to do is this chalice here. In the 220, it kind of got stung a bit up on one side by other corals. So what I want to do is kind of cut this into some nicer shapes. As you see, the growth ring here kind of has that green. So if we cut it into some nice pieces, it's going to have a green ring and it's going to grow out into a better shape. These here are the eyes of a chalice. You need to cut around the eyes and include at least one eye in every frag or it will not survive. So we have soil back on. I just want to say, Jim, I see your issue with the shipping on the mug. I'll check it out. I'll have my team check it out and see if it... Hi, if I cannot hear you. What? Yeah, no, I'm talking to, to Jim here. Oh, okay. He said that the shipping on the mug looks expensive. I told him that we'll check it out. Okay. All right, so on our chalice here, I'm going around. I'm going to get like three or four eyes on the one piece. Just looking to give it a good shape with none of that kind of die off end on here. And then I'm going to trim down how thick this is here because I want it to be able to lay nice and flat when it goes into an aquarium. Cutting down on the base here. So now when it goes in, you see it trim off a little bit of the excess rock here. So just kind of clean it off. But it's going to have a nice shape to it, and now it'll, it'll over, heal over on these edges and have a green growth ring on all sides as it grows out. And then we took away any of that kind of dead dying part. I'm just going to trim down the, uh, this kind of in half, cut it down. bucket here to rinse these off in. So it's not going into the tank. There's one more. I'm going to trim this one up. So basically with this one we've turned one colony that kind of had some damage to it and the three frags that'll grow out and all of them will have that nice green growth ring. And we'll have a good shape without any kind of damaging parts here. Rinse it off. Steven has a, an amazing question. What's that? How do you frag green star polyps? I'm going to show you. Ah, she's going to show you. But you got to do <clears> soft <throat> corals last, like I said, because there is more like slime and toxin that they put off. So you don't want to dirty the water that is in the reservoir here more than you have to. And then let's see here. Ed says, where did you purchase the saw? Uh, Griffin.com. Yeah. So it's Griffin.com. I'm gonna show you a couple on the ones. So here is a Lobo. And this one here has had a few heads that have died off over time. So we're gonna go ahead and trim that down so we have just a couple nice pieces and get rid of any of the excess skeleton. With Lobos, they do have to be completely separated. You cannot cut them if they're like one long conjoined because they're going to have a hard time healing. You're going to have more chance of it dying off. So if you look at this one, we have one, 
two, and three that have actually separated that we can cut down. Ryan says, <clears throat> what's the best tool to use for fragging if you don't have a bandsaw? Uh, yeah, it's... I mean, the archaic days, <laughs> the archaic <laughs> days is like a Dremel. That's mm -hmm. what I used to use way back in the day. You got bone cutters. Um, if it's soft corals, you can use like a scalpel, but they're not as precise. They're not gonna be as pretty, but you can make do with them. Okay, cool. The coral saw was not always a thing. So right. I mean, before that, it was seriously like hammering rock, dremeling them in like straight lines and losing a ton of the heads and, and right. the flesh. So um, it's come a long way, fortunately. So I'm gonna basically cut between these are my hands, trying to get the flesh to kind of scoot back a little bit. So you can see what the cut lines are. Cut this one big one off first. The minimal damage to any flesh is gonna help you not have any effect in later. So that one came off. We're gonna flatten his base so that we can put it onto a frag book. You want it to be able to sit flat. All right, the next one, going through here. And this one has some dead skeleton on it, so we're gonna take that off. flatten it out. With something like a lobo, their actual like internal organs, I guess, um, go a little bit deeper into the skeleton so you can't cut right up to it. You do need to give some space, otherwise you'll actually cut part of the coral and it will die. Then we just have our last little guy hanging on here. Gonna cut around him, get all the dead heads off. down. There we go. So these can just go on to... A lot of talk about the blade and watching your fingers. Is it scary? I guess. <laughs> I mean, so what do you have to watch out for with, with the uh, blade, Jess? Uh, okay, so technically it is a diamond blade, so the very front of it cannot cut your finger. Um, yep, yeah, so the, back the front of this is diamond coated. It I mean, I guess if you tried hard enough, it could, but if you push your finger against it when it's running, it's not gonna instantly cut you. However, the back is not diamond blade. It will cut your finger off. Please be careful. I've had it kick back before, like you're pushing a coral through and it kicks back or you move mm -hmm. your finger back, it will definitely cut. So you gotta be careful no matter, no, regardless, I guess. Yeah, regardless, but it is generally safe, um, especially with the front of it having diamond coating, because it will not actually really cut you if you just kind of put your finger against it. Don't go testing that theory, <laughs> like with pressure. So these guys all get their own frag plug. Now you got three Lobo frags and all the ugly extra skeleton is off. And they can go onto our frag rack. Once the glue goes into the water, it does cure and harden pretty quickly. That's when it kind of finals it, finalizes its set. So you don't have to leave them out for long. Jess, how many thousands of corals have you fragged? Um, I know. <clears throat> how many frags have you created? I know back in the day, I'd easily do like 400 frags in a day. Yeah. If I was working at like our coral farm or something like that. So I don't even know. And that was many years of lots of fragging. Thousands and thousands. Thousands and, and thousands. thousands and thousands of frags. Um, out there from that. And then <clears throat> we can do like one more LPS coral. We'll do a hammer. Kind of show you the structure with these. These are pretty easy. So this is our hammer colony that came out of there. Kind of kind of get him to smush his heads in. But you see we do have a couple heads that died off as it grew. So I'm going to cut this down into a couple frags with hammers and torches and stuff like that. <clears throat> 
If there's two heads that are close together, like this, and their flesh is still connected between their break, don't cut them. Uh, you're gonna have more chance of it risking infection. Only cut where there's skeleton and there's no actual flesh. So this one here, I'm gonna make a couple quick easy cuts to just make it more manageable in size. Kind of cut there. And cut there. Then what we can do is drop it. So basically one head each is only good on this piece still. Cut it straight so it's going to sit up on a fry plug. Like that. And this one here. And then this one I'm just going to take the dead head off of it. So I want to keep these a little bit bigger colony because they are going to go into the big tank. And then basically cut the bottom of this to be straight so that I can then layer as a frag. And then same with this one. I don't want to cut it down into individual heads. Frag them down like that. And this one is kind of side heavy. So if you cut them at an angle, It'll actually help counteract the weight, so you can sit them up. Because if you have one, if it's top heavy on one side, you'll never get it to sit on the frag, and then be able to glue it down. And then after this, we'll do some star polyps and show you that it is possible to cut star polyps. Rich's favorite coral ever. Yes, specifically the branching ones. You have the the carpeting ones. Is that what you're? Yeah, doing? the carpeting ones are in here. I got to snag a piece of the branching from the frag one of five point four that we have and definitely put a piece of that into luck. So these are just getting glued right on down. Don't be afraid to use a lot of glue because as long as it's not like gluing the flesh, it's better to have kind of a nice solid base. You're not going to see it much whenever it gets into the tank anyway. If you guys haven't already smashed that and like button. And these little guys I'm going to put on one of these fry plugs because these will eventually become a nice big colony as well. And there you go. We got our hammers on that one. <clears throat> All right, star polyps. So sweet, sweet. <laughs> um, here's our star polyps from the 220. These are actually really beautiful star polyps. They're super bright, very long, so nice and wavy. I just made them close, but you can see them there. Um, but they grew in this really awkward shape that kind of just isn't very useful. So I'm going to cut it into some more flat pieces so that when they move into a tank it's not like this big lump just sitting there. Make it more uh, pleasing to the eye I guess. As you see star polyps just create a whole um, layer on the rock. You can technically peel it up that way and actually glue it down and you've got star polyps there. So you can if it's got a nice raised edge piece depending on the type of the rock you can actually pull frags off of it. We're gonna cut the rest just for simplicity and to make them all pretty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take like the whole top layer off of this one. I'm gonna cut it really close so it doesn't sit up too high. So that can then go into two smaller pieces. And then like this side, I can take that whole side off. Cool thing with this is you can leave this all the places I cut off and it's going to regrow over those spots. So it's here. I'm going to just cut this one side off because it's got like this kind of hang off. There we go. Put that back in. And it actually will regrow on that whole piece. And if I wanted to, I could just cut it all down more, which I'll probably do once I have time to do that, because it'll give us a lot of pieces just to grow out. And then these can just be glued down. I'm going to put our hammers back in, now that they've had a time to set a little bit.
For the most part, corals don't really care about being fragged. <laughs> Someone asked uh, if if they react to, <clears throat> for instance, like that that hammer or like a torch coral, where they react, the other heads react. Like, would it take them a while to open back up after you frag them or something like that? Um, I mean, they're basically just reacting to being removed out of the water. Yeah. Um, so you see they shrink in, but before long, they're going to start opening back up. And then tomorrow, they're going to be fully. If you're not cutting the flesh of an LPS, like it doesn't bother it much at all. If you cut the flesh, it just has to regrow that side. Keep an eye out for like any kind of infections. Um, <clears throat> but they're very, very resilient, which I think a lot of people don't think corals are that resilient. All right, so we'll put our frag stir polyps on some little plugs. Taking our flat pieces. Then whenever they regrow over this frag plug, you'll never even know that there was a plug there. I'm all about making frags pretty. Because I hate when you have these like lump of a coral that's got like an un unnatural shape to it or just you can tell that it's like a lot of stone under one mm -hmm. coral or something like that. There you go. Then you can go right back in. Someone asked what type of coral glue we're using. They might not have seen that. We're using the Ecotech Marine Coral Glue. They have these really big bottles, which makes it really nice. Yeah, so they got a couple different size bottles. I definitely say, um, you know, get the bigger bottle. It is so much easier to use, I feel, than the smaller ones. The last thing you want to be doing is like moving corals around, putting them in place in the tank, and then you run out of glue. So better to have it on hand. So there is some um, star polyps. Something similar are daisy polyps. So these guys, if you get them to close up, they do the same thing as they grow a mat onto the rock. It's not as like dense of a mat, so a lot of times you can't really um, pull it off by finger. We'll just make a quick frag of this one. All right, so with these guys, you don't have to worry about where you cut. Soft corals like this one's that are matte, they'll regrow. It doesn't really matter to them. We'll cut the one chunk off. And then I want to make it so it sits nice and even. Take off that extra rock at the bottom. And then when you put it back down, you have a nice kind of more even looking frog. And these can just go right back in. All right. This tank just filled up. <laughs> Dude, yeah. If you cut everything down in here, it'll be insane. So, like this one here, these are some huge mushrooms. They get I mean, like double this size. I want to take them down into individuals. So I wanted to get them to close up a little bit. This so way I can kind of have them spread a lot of, out a little bit and make like a big old mat of them. So main thing is getting them to close up enough so you can see the rock in between them without cutting the edge of your mushroom off. And I also want to take that little leather off of there. This one here again, all you're doing is really cutting the rock in between them. I'm trying to cut as much rock off around them because whenever they grow into a tank, I want them to really go against the rock that's in there. So you spend all this time aquascaping, you don't want to add all these chunks of rock that don't really go with the flow of it. So there's one cut down. There's one. Kind of go. Get them to kind of fold up. Got all that extra rock under there. It's also going to make it so it grows on and like puts its babies onto the rock in your aquarium faster. The less rock of that it's on, it'll spread onto your rock better. Gotta move your mushroom around. And then that takes the leather off of there. It's kind of an invasive leather, it shows up everywhere. 
I don't want to transfer it with the mushrooms. There you go. And you have three mushrooms on nice flat surfaces. And I'll just put them down here. Can you glue zoanthids to plugs or rocks by their flesh? <clears throat> um, you'd only want some rock under them just because if you glue their flesh, they're probably just going to slime off of it. Um, it is ideal. So we can actually do that. So, like here's some palyphoas. If you take just their flesh and you put it on coral glue, they're going to slime off of it and usually are going to go missing. It's going to be hard for you to keep them in place. If you have them loose and it's just flesh, I'd say put them in a basket with like some small rubble and have them attached to it and then attach that to a frag plug. Always try to have some kind of stone in here. So these are some palythoas. I'm gonna just break this into a couple pieces. Palythoas do have a lot of toxins and can squirt pally juice into your eyes, so do be careful. Kanan backs up. <laughs> He's like, no thank you. Uh, so yeah, so. Try to get in between the polyps as much as possible, especially if it's one of those that like costs a lot of money per polyp. I mean, there's some zoo that there's like 60 bucks, 100 bucks for a single polyp. So when you're cutting those and you kill one polyp, it can be a big deal. Just kind of go around there. So ideally, have some rock with them. Flatten that one out. Then these can go on to a little plug. What's your favorite coral, <clears throat> Jess? Everyone knows mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I can pick one. Favorite soft coral. Okay, favorite soft coral is going to be clove polyps. Favorite LPS. LPS coral is going to be a tie between blastos and goniaporas. Hard favorite coral. SPS coral I is mean, yeah, going SPS. to be all of them. All? I hate keeping them, but I love them. I gotta go star polyps. Wall hammers and uh, millipora. Nice. Yeah. Good mix. I actually have a really nice wall frog spawn. I'd actually like over to know <clears throat> everyone here watching what's your favorite soft LPS and SPS? Yes. All right, and then I'm going to show you some clove polyps, my favorite. Let me just discern that. So these guys grow onto the rocks. Kind of like, I don't know, I guess you could say like ivy almost. Like they put runners out that then attach and they pop up little clove polyps along those runners. So they're really good spreaders. You can see where the original frag plug is. So I'm going to try and cut that off. I don't want to rip them because they will just destroy the polyps um, there. I'm going to cut these into a couple frags. And these are actually like the pink tip for clove polyps. They will to overtake an area, but they're pretty enough that it's kind of okay, I think. And then these are ones that you can use a scalpel kind of with to frag, but simplify it. Just kind of separating their little runners. And then for this one, I'm gonna take the club off. Just so it's just nice and flat. And then here, you can kind of see where the runners are stretching across these two different spots. Separate those. I'm not going to cut this super small. Got to get the excess rock off of it. This rock has a good amount of them. I'm just going to clean it up, make it a smaller frag. Let's see where it's at. 
there we go. Take all this extra rock off here. Then when it goes into a tank, it's nice and flat. It's going to grow evenly over the rock around it. Here's a great question. <clears throat> Ed says, can you frag a wall hammer? No, don't do it. Yeah. Success rate extremely low. Um, not impossible, but the success rate is very low. Typically when you see a wall hammer or something like that's been around for a long time, they're very large. Yeah, and the thing is, is like the more flesh you have to cut through, the harder it is for a coral to recover, or the more likely it is to get a bacterial infection or something like that in that area. So you want stuff that you can actually cut around as much flesh as possible. If it's one of those real f fleshy corals, hammers, frog spawns, um, blastos, acans, stuff like that. Yeah. Three pretty frags of clove polyps. Rodney says, which corals can't be fragged? We talked about you shouldn't frag a wall hammer. Now what else? Can't you frag? Um, I think that's about it. What about like a scoli? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I guess scolies and like meat corals. So like this one here. This is one big coral. There's one mouth, one small skeleton. There is no cutting that, and there's really no reproducing of them in the aquarium. So it's something that is really not aquaculturable unfortunately so there is a handful of corals that just only do come from the wild yeah. and they don't really have any way to reproduce them so um i'm not doing any leathers leathers are a whole nother we'll have to do a different episode on that one because yeah. those are um disgusting and horrible <laughs> to cut up they take a lot of different type of you actually have to like sew them down and cut them with a scalpel so don't try those at home unless you've kind of seen how to do it because it is a mess all right. <clears throat> Rodney knows what's up. He said that his favorite corals are GSP, uh, hammers, and millies. Wow, look at you guys. Yeah. Y'all like the besties of favorite corals. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. I mean, it, honestly, it's a really hard to um, pick favorite corals. Like, they all have their special place. Even the most basic coral, Lazania or Zoanthid or Star Polyps, like, they have mm -hmm. their own beauty. Um, and they have their certain spot that belongs well. Like a softy tank, a full softy tank, is a beautiful thing. Lots of color, lots of movement, easy to keep, grows in quickly. Yeah. And then you have SBS, they're beautiful. It's a very fine detailed beautiful, but you know, you, they grow an inch in a year. Yeah. <clears throat> and you're, you're like, for a filled in coral tank, you're, I mean, you're looking at years and years of yeah. growth and progress. I typically so. see at least many years ago, people would always start with the easy stuff. And then the guys that stick around for a long time, they end up with like, the full, they want to do the full blown SPS tank. Yeah. And they go hard, they <clears> buy <throat> all the equipment, and they buy the bigger tank. And They're intense. Those yeah. are intense tanks, so. Yeah. We might, have, <clears throat> we might have one of those in the works sometime. Yeah, I think that we have to. I think we have to. So yeah. stay tuned, there might be a, an SPS system to show you the ropes on something really advanced. Um, but, you know, we've got a lot of our sleeve with the new studio. We've got tons of space, yeah. lots of aquariums lots to go Lots of up. cool stuff coming down the pipeline, you guys. Lots of builds, lots of really neat systems. Yeah. So. I don't know if we're doing a Q&A because Rich kind of read through yeah, them. Yeah, there's something during that you guys. <laughs> uh, there are some. There's a couple. Okay. There you go. Okay, so we're going to do a couple. <clears throat> Beaver Bell says, do you need to dip all the frags? Do you need to dip all the frags still if they're from the same system? Are we talking about for pests or after fragging? After fragging, so. Um, I mean, like I said, it's a beneficial thing. The fleshier the coral, um, you know, especially if you're cutting into flesh, it's helpful, um, and particularly SBS, to dip them in some kind of iodine dip, um, either right after or, you know, kind of periodically as they're healing. Um, but like soft corals, not really a, usually a big deal. Or if like the hammers and stuff, you're just cutting stone and you're not cutting any flesh, you really don't have to worry about those. Cool. Garrett says, do you recycle the cutoffs into crushed coral? I surely do not. I could, I guess. So wasteful. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you certainly could, I guess. I guess you could. Yeah, no. I don't use crushed coral for anything. 
though. Yeah, but yeah. It, I mean, it's just excess rock that gets cut off and it gets thrown away. Yeah. You could use it for refugium rubble. Yeah. You could do it, you know, stuff like that if you really needed to save it. Sounds interesting, though. Yeah. That's your job. I'm going to hand them to you and you're going to bush, break them up into a crushed coral. No. No. Okay. Not <laughs> no, I'd try Denied. it. Denied. I'd try it. <laughs> Thank you, Garrett. <clears throat> oh. Oh, see ya. Went away. There you go. <laughs> Carrie says, do you feed or do corals feel pain when they're cut? Ooh. I don't think so, but my mom was kind of freaking out at the thought of having to divide them. <laughs> I mean, I feel, like, screaming. I, feel like, ah! I feel like this could be a much deeper conversation and there's probably a lot of sides to it, but no, I don't think so. Um, they're not, they don't have like blood system, I mean, nerves they don't have a brain. So they don't have a brain. Yeah. No, um, I'm going to vote no. I'm going to vote no, but I'm sure there's no exact science to that. Yeah, <laughs> we can't, we can't exactly ask them. Um, Nino says, how big is that tank? That is the Frag 165.6, so it is six foot long. You can check it out on the website for it's all the beauty. specs and dimensions. It's a beautiful frag tank. We have frag systems like that from three, three, four, five, and six foot. So kind of any size. We have the Frag 105.4 here in the studio. We've done lots of um, videos and a whole build on. You can check that out. But I love the frag tanks because I can reach into it without a step stool. Ah, I see. I, I see. I thoroughly now. appreciate that with the frag tank. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. They yeah. look super slick though. That low They're very, very profile. Nice. Mm -hmm. And nice, if you're short nice like full me, full blown SPS tank in there would be pretty sweet. Yeah, it, it would actually look really good that way. Yeah. So awesome. Hopefully everyone enjoyed the fragging demo. If you guys haven't already, destroy that like button. Okay. Jess says that it's mandatory. You have to do it. It is. It really yeah. is. Yeah. If you haven't already, also subscribe. Hit the notification bell. We're giving away some shirts. I think we're probably due for that now. In two minutes. In two, two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. All two, right. Let's, two seconds. Can we two play minutes. the intro again? <laughs> play that intro. Yeah. I don't know. We're gonna stand here. Um, Tomorrow, oh. we're j diving back into the Reef LX. Yes, so we'll be here tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're talking about uh, proper flow in a large reef aquarium, or really any aquarium, um, and talking return pumps and power heads. Yeah. So very vital part of, I mean, you can't have an aquarium without a return pump. Yeah. And having the proper flow can help with everything from nutrient control, healthier corals, um, that kind of stuff. So we're kind of going over that going to show you any updates on the LX as it's coming. Last week we added inverts in, so it's finally got live things going mm -hmm. into it, which is great. Mango, the resident naso tang, has found her new home. You told that. Oh, they're not supposed to know? <laughs> well, I think it was on social media, so oh, it's okay. okay. Um, yeah, okay. so Mango got moved into, since she's like... I'm staring at her swimming around over here, so I had to move. <laughs> you. She was like she's the, like the zooming queen. around like really rapidly. She's loving it. it. It's huge. Um, she was the queen of the 220. So mm -hmm. she had to go in. I figured she's going to go in first. And she's a sweetheart. So I'm not worried about her being aggressive to anybody that goes in. So she got to um, break in the LX first. If you guys don't know who Mango is, Mango is the nasal tank that I've had since 2007. And it probably hasn't grown. Yeah. <laughs> Same size. Not sure why that happened. Okay. But I think, it's, I think it's a dwarf nasal. Or two minutes already. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So we have the winners of the shirts. Ready? Go. Winners are Carrie Goodman, Goodman, and Rodney Choop Chup. Choop Chup. Congratulations. Choop Chup. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> um, email winners at waterboxaquariums.com, and they'll get you hooked up with your shirt. Get yourself a knowledge shirt. Yes. And again, you guys, we appreciate you being here. If you haven't already. Gently graze. That, that like I think button. you just like saying these I do. things. <laughs> I do. It oh, brings me great joy. We cannot forget. Next week is a really exciting show. So, um, what is it? <laughs> Tell me. I haven't sent you a Tell memo me yet. Um, <laughs> Jordan and Donna from ORA. Oh yeah. That you've seen in our videos. Donna's been on here through our Peninsula ORA build, answering questions. Are actually coming here to the studio. Doing your best behavior. Um, and I'll try. You guys don't want to miss that one. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, so they're going to do live Q&A here at the studio for you guys for all questions, array, livestock, all about the build. Um, we're really excited to have him here. 
Yeah. Um, it's really exciting that they're coming all the way here to do, you know, Q&A for you guys. So definitely tune in next week for sure. For do sure. not miss it. Thank you, guys. We'll be here tomorrow at 1 p.m. Yeah. See you then. See you. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Remember, you can visit us online at waterboxaquariums.com. We're live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for watching. See you next week.